Hello, my name is Sylvie, and I hope all of you are doing well. Among the billions of people you could have chosen to listen to, you've chosen me, and I thank you for your time. So please, sit back, relax, and grab some popcorn while I tell you about my 17 years of life so far. I suppose all stories have a start, so let's take a short trip out of America to where I was born, and let me paint a picture for you. A city where people never sleep, motorbikes always humming to the late hours of the night, and tall buildings outlining the sky. My story starts here, in Hanoi, the capital city of Vietnam, on January 13, 2007, in one of the small orphanages. I was left there on the steps in hopes of a better life, at least that's what I'd like to think happened, and the woman there took care of me until my adoptive parents came, Dave and Elizabeth. When my adoptive parents did come, I was very sick. They took me to the hospital and nursed me back to health before they took me away to America, where I currently still reside in Pittsburgh, North Carolina. I was then introduced to my sister Rose, who was also adopted, um, and I grew up with her until she moved out to attend college. I was a very adventurous baby and a kid, to a point where my parents had to resort to air nets over my crib and running to find me while I played outdoors. When I was old enough, I attended a local preschool named Pittsburgh Baptist Church and Pittsburgh Elementary School. Here, I not only found one of my best friends of 13 years, but also that I was different. And now, not to mean that I was different in a bad way, of course, but different being the only Asian person within my class. And I felt isolated and even jealous in a way that they got to know everything about their family and I didn't get to. As I got older, these questions started to swarm into my head until I asked my parents about my past. but to no avail. They didn't have any answers I sought for. And for the first time in my life, I didn't know who I was. And though seventh grade to my junior year, I've been trying to find myself through different names, and I went through them again and again and again, from Heather to Siler to Silkov to Echo to finally landing on one, Sylvie. And as I went through these names, I found out more and more about my culture. I even went back to Vietnam and I fell in love with the country once again. The beauty of my home country and its deep culture, and I got to pray in each god's respective temples. Even though I'm th thousands of miles away, I try to participate in my culture from celebrating Tet, the Mid-Autumn Festival, and even making tons of food. From this journey, I've learned to accept myself for who I am, even though I don't have all the answers. And that's alright. I'm young, and I have years left to go. Hopefully, in time, of course, I'll get them. But until then, thank you so much for listening to my story. Hello, my name is Rose, and I was adopted from the Anhui province in China when I was about one years old. I grew up in North Carolina in a rural small town called Pittsburgh. I am part of a family of four, with both of my adopted parents from Michigan and my younger sister adopted from Vietnam. During my childhood, my parents made sure that we knew where we were from and shared as much history as they could. When I was younger, I attended a Chinese camp where we learned traditional dances, culture, and language. This exposed me to parts of my culture that my parents couldn't offer. Our town had a very limited diversity, so in schools and extracurriculars, there were only a few other students who were Asian, and most of them had Asian families. Most of my childhood friends were white, and the Asian part of my identity was rarely thought about. Honestly, I thought more about the lack of information I had about my past than what made my physical appearance different. Whenever other kids talked about where or when they were born, I always felt a little left out, because I simply didn't know. My birthday was estimated by doctors, so there was no way of knowing if it was accurate or not. Another topic that came up a lot was what features people got from their parents. This was something I couldn't connect with and often sat on the edge of these conversations. My parents never never failed to make us feel like a family, but a blood connection is something we will never have. This has made me think about my future and what I want my own family to look like. The debate between adopting and having my own kids has been on my mind for as long as I can remember. While blood is not everything, and my own experiences attest to that, I still want to have that biological connection with someone in my life, but I also feel like I should give another child the chance that was given to me. All I know about my birth parents is that they left me on the doorstep of a church near the orphanage that took me in. There is a lot of discussion about adoptive children being reunited with their birth families, but I have no interest in that. I was born during the one-child policy era, and a daughter was not what families wanted but I still can't help but feel thrown away.
I am thankful for what my adoptive parents have done for me, but my past has still affected me emotionally. Knowing my birth parents just left me has loaded me with both intimacy and abandonment issues throughout my life. I'm a high stress person and feeling unwanted in any aspect of my life affects how I function greatly. Now that I'm in college, I decided to attend NC State, which has a higher Asian population than what I'm used to. My new friend group is mostly people from minority groups, but I'm still the only one who has been adopted. They are all much more in touch with their culture from their parents, and sometimes I feel like a fake Asian who doesn't belong in these circles. I was part of the Asian Student Association for a semester, which was cool, but I didn't feel like I really belonged. The where are you really from question is something many members of the minority population face frequently. While I am from China, I grew up in North Carolina and identify that as where I am really from. My home is here, and while I would like to be more connected with my history and culture, I am proud of where I come from and who I am today. Thank you for listening. Hi, my name is Leah Bivens. I am an adoptee. I was born in China and adopted at one year old and brought to the States. I love my family very, very much. And I wanted to teach you guys about a concept called third culture kids, which is what I am. So a third culture kid is someone who grew up with at least three different cultures uh, in their household. It can be about race, sexuality, identity, economic class, uh, interest, anything. Um, In my case, I grew up in a white family, white American family. I am Asian American, and I'm an adoptee. And I'm a third culture kid because I identify most as an adoptee. That is my proudest identity. Not to say I'm not proud of the other two, but it is definitely the one I hold closest to my heart. The One of the ways that I explain it is if I were to walk into a room with three different people, a white American, an Asian American, and an adoptee, of any race, of any background, of any nationality, I would instantly feel more connected to that adoptee and want to talk to them and become friends with them immediately um, because we shared that special thing in common. And I think that learning that I was a third culture kid, uh, it only happened in college thanks to a very helpful teacher, but learning that I identified it as such, it really helped me become more at peace at the way I viewed myself. You know, there's a big push-pull when you're a third culture kid of like, oh, I'm too white to be Asian or I'm too Asian to be white or I don't feel like I'm anything or I feel like I'm too many things. And being able to find your greatest identity can be really, really stabilizing. And it's a really great way of explaining to non-adoptees how you view the world. So thank you so much for listening. I hope you learned something new today. And thank you so much, Zoe, for allowing me to be a part of this project.